Hi everyone, you're watching Campus Channel and we are here today with Kedge Business School to talk about the Master in Innovation and International Purchasing. Gordon Crichton, the Program Director, is waiting for your question and we will be joined later by one of his students. But first, let's begin with the pitch. <laughs> Gordon, you've got one minute flat. Are you ready? Yeah. Um, Go. I am a director of a, of a program which is specialized in purchasing. The problem is most people don't know what purchasing is. Purchasing has changed. There's a massive revolution in purchasing. What purchasing used to be about, you probably know yourself, is the old fashioned guy with the, bat, the baseball bat trying to strangle his supplier to get money out. Purchasing is no longer about price. Purchasing is about how do I work upstream with strategic suppliers who are innovating? You know, most of the companies that our students go to can no longer create value through price. If you look at the L'Oreal's, Louis Vuitton's, they can't create value through price. They've got to be putting, prog they've got to be putting products onto the market as quickly as possible. This is about innovation capture, speed to market, and where is innovation coming from? Well, the CEO of Danone said recently, we estimate that 70% of our innovation over the next five years will come from our strategic suppliers. The thing is, we don't know what our strategic All right, time suppliers are doing. Yeah. Sorry, we've got Sorry. to move on to the face-to-face. -face. Please remember to keep sending us your questions. They're going to show up right there. So let's start with the first one. Go ahead, Gordon. Will you read this question for me, please? You say that 50% of international students benefit from, from scholarships, but how many international students are there and what is the proportion of international students? That's a good question because if you'd have asked me a different question which is which is the part of the MIE which is perhaps the, the weaker point of the MIE. What's happened over the, over the last years is if you look back five years ago most of our students went to multinationals but French based multinationals. That has changed so much over these last five years. Mm -hmm. The problem perhaps for the MIE is we have something like 450 master students who are all high level. We have difficulty, in fact, the, the selection tests are difficult because I, I just believe we have so many good people applying uh, and I love that. But the reality is we have a high percentage of French based students applying. And so if we look so at- So how many are actually international? Um, is it still 50%? Uh, probably about 20%. 20% 20% of our students are international. And where do they come from? Oh, they come from everywhere. You've got a number from Europe, but they're from South America. We've got from India. We've got them from Indonesia. Uh, we've got a lot of Chinese students, of course. Any Anglo or Anglo students from England or the U.S.? Uh, yeah, a good we've got. For them. We've got. Yeah, but they're in dribs and drabs. They're mm. not that. Not enough of them, because you ask me how many students have we got that are international? Twenty, twenty-five percent. But how many of our students go out of France when they finish their studies? Sixty-five percent. And where do they go? Well, they go to, to multinationals all over the world. If you look at, if you go back eight or 10 years in purchasing, the companies that were uh, underlining the strategic importance of purchasing were in industry, automobile, aeronautic, electronics. I was in the electronics industry. Why? Because we were subcontracting more and more out. You take a PlayStation, it was no longer manufactured by Sony, it was manufactured by Flextronics and so on and so on. So you need people who are innovating out there. Uh, so it became important. These last five or six years, that has spread across FMCG, fast-moving consumer goods. They are the companies recruiting today. Which are, what are fast-moving consumer goods, uh, exactly? Everything which is cosmetics, agro-foodstuffs, pharmaceuticals, household goods, everything you find in a bottle or a packet. So it's the L'Oreal's, it's the Danone's, Unilever's, Mars, Johnson & Johnson, Nestle, etc., etc. These are the people who have come, the companies coming in massively to recruit. And so you ask where our students are going. Well, they're going all over the place. I mean, they're going uh, uh, across Europe, but most of them are going to, uh, loads of them are going to Asia, South America coming in now. We've got Coty and Estee Lauder so in, in, in the, New York. Why come to France in the first place to do this program well, if they're going to go elsewhere? Um, because there are not many programs in the world that are specialized in what we do. You see, if you look at purchasing, you look at almost every program. I, I think you could say every other program apart from ours, they are always purchasing and supply chain, purchasing and supply chain. Arizona State, 
Michigan State purchasing and supply chain. What does that mean? That means we've got a group of guys downstream making sure that we get our factories delivered on time, etc. Yeah, we need that. And lots of, I'm not, I'm not looking down on that at all. That is necessary if you're bringing containers from the other side of the world and so on. But that's not, that's not our focus area at all. Where we are and where we are specialized and where we're brought in to consult and to coach companies is the upstream bit. And that is, how do we get purchasing involved in new product development? How do we get purchasing involved in innovation capture? How do we get purchasing involved in uh, speed to market? And so it's not purchasing and supply chain, it's purchasing and new products, purchasing and innovation, purchasing and the consumer, purchasing, if you like, and the shopper. Now, it's very nobody else. I think we're going to have to move on to the next question. Nobody else is doing it. And so when you look at these FMCG companies, when they're looking for this new animal, and it is a new animal, it's nothing like the old negotiator. This is somebody who's working in brand management. You're seeing binome situations with marketing, purchasing, and we're looking at the next shampoo, we're looking at the next chocolate bar, and, and we're working, how can we bring how can we bring suppliers upstream and use their expertise? In the old days, sure. we, we, we I think we need to move on to the next question. We got to get to as many viewer questions as possible. Go for it. Go I'm for sure it. we'll get, to get back to some of this, though. Yeah, okay. So let's read the next question. What is the typical student profile? Um, well, um, I, I'm not too sure you could say typical. There are a lot of business, student, uh, business studies students, but then I'd say they're about 35 or 40 percent of technical, scientifics, engineering based. Um, and then you've got the they come odd- from these education backgrounds looking to get a business angle to their profile or? Yeah, I, I don't think they're looking just to get a business uh, profile. I, I, think, I think a lot of them have been working in uh, companies. A lot of them found themselves by accident working in purchasing. You see, when I found myself in purchasing many years ago, I wondered what I'd done wrong. Nobody aimed to go into (laughs) purchasing. And the thing is why? Because it was considered uh, uh, as the guy who's working only on price. It's become all about this exciting bit about how do we work on new products. And so the the typical student could could really come from anywhere. But most of them, what, what I want them to be is people who want to be looking at business, people who like business. That's what I want. You see, how many people like business? Business is about, you go down to the market and you see the guy selling shirts or oranges. I love that, that's business, you know? A lot of people look down on that. So it doesn't matter whether you've come from a science background or not. If you, you like- prefer a certain level of education, bachelor's, master's? Yeah, you've got to have a master's. You've got to have, uh, you've got to have a, a, good, a good bachelor degree, yeah? If you're coming, so it's a good BSc, but I would say that I would be open to to anybody, you know, because you can't compare that. You can have people in the UK who've done a bachelor's degree in some slightly obscure subject, you know. In the UK, you train, you do a degree to show that you're capable of learning. Here we're in France, you do a degree in the area that you want to go into. It's not the same everywhere. I think that uh, uh, If you ask me what type of student we're looking for, but that's maybe not the question, uh, I can go into that as as well. Because the type of student we're looking for, purchasing is about communication. It's about relationships. I'm not looking for, okay, if, if they've got a good BSc, that to me shows they're analytically bright. You know, this thing's turning round. And that does me. I am looking for people uh, who like people people who like sitting down and talking, people who are gonna build relationships with the R&D guys, with, with the design people, with the marketing people. You try and build a relationship with the artistic design guy. It's a guy. very comprehensive Yeah, profile. they're, they're yes. in a different world, you know, c'est de l'art. Okay, uh, let's move how on are to the next question that? really quickly. What do we I'm have here? I'm surprised by the absence of the supply chain thematic. Are you not teaching us that at all? Yes, we teach part of supply chain but we teach about the importance of supply chain. We don't teach you how to do it. If you're interested in doing it, in our school Kedge, we've got the best, what I believe to be the best supply chain program in the world. It's called ISLI. It's the best? Oh, I think so. I think so. Why is it the best? uh, Well, I'm not here to talk about ISLI, so I don't want to use up too much of my time. 
but I'm not the director of it. Dominica Stomp is. Are and there and opportunities you, to take classes from that thematic? While uh, no, but the teachers who program? actually do that are actually teaching on ISLI as well. But you see, logistics and supply chain has, be, has changed a lot as well. If that's your thing, you should go for it. If you're interested in new product development and innovation capture, then you're not in the supply chain. Come to us. That's the difference. So we can't, when you look at uh, what we have to do, I mean, do you know how long it takes Ferrero to get their new Kinder chocolate bar on the market? You don't. Come, come and spend a few, <laughs> few months with us and you'll know all about it. Because you're looking at, you see, if, you can, if, if Ferrero can get their new Kinder surprise, Kinder Bueno, onto the market in 11 months instead of 16 months, well, then you're generating you're generating value five added. months. Exactly. You're generating five months sales that you didn't have. So what are you doing? You're contributing to the growth of the company. Here we're looking at growth. We're upstream, we're not downstream. And so the downstream bit about how do we make sure all that gets put into place and that's moving as well, that's more of a supply chain issue. A nice one, it's a nice one, but it's not the same. I know most of the people watching don't really know what they want to do. You see, and Is they get worried. Problem? No, they can. Their parents your think. Their parents often think it's a problem. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Is my message. You will find out what you want to do one day once you start talking to the people. And, and once you get that bug to do something, you'll know that that program's right for you. And that's why, hopefully, as we get to the end of the interview, I'll say to you, you know, OK, I'm the director of this thing, but the best people to talk to are our alum, alumni. Right. Go, go and pester them, say, you know, get, get, ask them questions, try and find out about their day-to-day -day life sure, and all that that's, stuff. That's a great resource. We've got a lot of questions, so let's move on to the next okay. one. I was curious about the admission process. What is the interview format? What level in English or French are we expected to have? All right, multi-part question here. Okay, well. <laughs> Let's break it down. Admission I, process. Um, okay, well, I'll start at the end. What level of English or French? If you're doing the English program, you don't need to, sp to speak French. If you come to our program in France, hopefully you will learn French, but that's an add-on. If you don't want to learn it, you don't. It would be a pity, yeah? Because nine months or whatever you're spending here. Uh, English, I don't look at all these TOEFLs and TOEICs. I, I don't like them. I, I, I just don't like them. I met you, Jacob, a few minutes ago. Uh, within 30 seconds, I knew you were good at English. You see, I, 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 and you know the same for me. I, I don't go through these things where you pay a lot of money to, to get a so-called uh, accreditation or standard or I've got 600 points. Oh, wow. wow. OK, what, what, the admission process is all about your personality. It's about your personality. So what are when, you looking for in the person? I'm looking for the person who, when he walks through the door, he looks at me, he sits down. I'm looking at his eye contact. I'm looking for people who are good communicators, who like being with people. You, you, their, me, their eyes send messages. Huh? Don't, don't think all, I'm making can, this you up. You can tell all this, this in an interview. No, uh, no, you can't tell all of that. That's the problem. There is a, a, a part of of an interview that the French could call aléatoire, which means you, you, the, 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 it's, it's left to chance. Mm. But in, in an interview of, of, of half an hour, and then another interview of 15 minutes, and another interview of 15 minutes, you start having quite a good idea. The reason it's difficult is the people who really want to get in are under stress. If you get somebody who's already been accepted at London Business School or somewhere else, he might come and think, well, even if I don't get it, it's not the end of the world. He'll be a little bit more cool about it uh, and probably a little bit better at, at answering the questions. And you have to try to compensate for that. So but for I'm, catch, looking, though, yes. I'm looking for people who I think would be good at building relationships internally. As you what, said. As I yes. said before. I'm looking for people who are competitive. We, some people don't like this word. I like it. I want people who want to win. They want to win. So okay. they need to be able to demonstrate all of this in their application and in the interview then? Well, in their application, yes. That's more the enthusiasm for, for, for where they want to be going. But more in when you're interviewing, they've got something here and you see it in their eyes. When I say they want to win, don't take it wrong. Um, we, have, we don't win all the time. There's no problem with that. If you lose, there's no problem, but to have the satisfaction of having tried to win, I think that's great. The other thing I'm looking for, and possibly the, possibly the most important, is people who are positive. 
You see, we're surrounded by negative thinking people. You know, uh, 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 we start complaining. They don't lose an opportunity, miss an opportunity to pull downwards. You see, negative is contagious. But the good news for us is positive is also contagious. That's what I like. Positive people. You know, we're going to get there. Come on, let's go. Let's boost them. Uh, I love it. I love it. And you, can, you can't see it all the time, but you, you, you can get quite a feel for that. All uh, right. So yeah. we're going to take a quick break from questions because it is time for three words max. Uh-huh. Our guest has three words to describe the program, and for each word, they get one idea. So, Gordon, let's hear your first word. The first word is employability. Employability. My advice to young people, I've got children who are 23 and 21 years old. My advice is, if you're going to do a master's program, don't just do it to have the diploma. You see, there's been a devaluation of, of degrees over the years, where, whether we like that word or not. In All right, the past, we've got to move on to second yeah, word. No, then. no, no. But no, <laughs> one, uh, let me. Yeah, but, one phrase but for e idea. Employability. You've got to go for a program where you get a job. Okay, that's the main thing. If you Point. come out of the MIE, you're guaranteed. You almost get a written guarantee. You get a job. Why? There is a shortage. This new animal. We don't. The, the companies don't know where to find them. And so, all right. Uh, second word, Gordon. Sorry. <laughs> well, the second one for me, we've already mentioned this a lot, is relationships. Okay. You see, everybody thinks they're good at building relationships. Everybody thinks they're good at that. You see, I say to people sometimes to my to to, to potential students, are you a things person or a people person? You see, a things person is somebody he loves Excel. Ooh, ooh, ooh you know, and, and then he goes <laughs> home. Oh, he loves PlayStation, Battlefield. Da, 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 da. You see, these people are things people. They love machines. And people, 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 people are yes. people who like people. They like talking to people. They get talking to people. You're sitting on a plane. You chat a little bit to the person next to you. You're learning things all the time from those people. And so relationships, are, I think. Third word. And the third word then for me is what I said before, positive, positive thinking people. That's it. That's it. You've got to, uh, you can be, You've got to be boosting people, you know, and this, this is about how tomorrow, because these young people, whether we you see, are going to be managers tomorrow, they're going to be managers. They're going to have people very, in, a, in a very short sp space of time who are 25 years older than them, who didn't do the, the, the same level of, de of degrees or whatever. How are you going to give them the desire in the morning to, to get up, to drop off the two kids, to come through the 30 miles of, of traffic jams? You've got to stay then, positive. And then when you get there, you want them to be fixing ambitious objectives and to reach them. You've got to be giving them this desire. It's almost a desire to wake up in the morning and come to work. It's you were right when you told me that you speak in very long phrases. So we're going to have to get back to the viewer questions. Okay. Let's take the next question. What do we have? The tuition fees seem very expensive compared to the infrastructure. Ah, have you seen our infrastructure? I expect from a business school. Ah, you expect. How do you justify the expense? Um, what are the tuition okay. fees? Okay, exactly? uh, you're asking me, if you ask L'Oreal to justify why a bottle of perfume costs 95 euros, it's not that easy, you know? Uh, we're not very expensive when it comes to high-level business schools. How much is the school? 15,600 euros. And how does that compare to other schools? Well, like uh, it depends. If you want to do an MBA at INSEAD, it's 82,000 euros. Mm -hmm. But if you look at master's programs across Europe, well, probably about 16 or 18,000. You know, the, it's, it's not a question. I mean, if you look at the infrastructure, our infrastructures are fantastic. So if I'd have seen cover? that question 10 years ago, I'd have had to think about it. What but does this cover uh, then? We've got a brand new installation in, in Bordeaux, which is unbelievable. Here we are in the center of Paris. Our, our installation's right behind the opera, right behind Galerie Lafayette. Come and see it. It, 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 it is. So it's you're a paying for the opera and shopping. It's a business club. <laughs> it's a business club. No, you're not paying for that. Sure. You're paying for the high level people who are teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't come cheaply and, and that's it. It's not a question of that. You're paying for the fact that you've got a lot of people building relationships with companies. Companies. If you get jobs when you come out of the MIE, it's because we're close to companies. That's what it is. We're, and we're doing on, on a day-to-day -day basis, I spend my life in companies. And what so are some of those companies? That you've got you have to have quite to? a big 
organization behind you to be building those relationships. And, and, and that's, that's, that's what high level business schools are about. You know, I'm not criticizing other schools, but if you look, there's a big divide now between what we're looking at the big high level business schools and they're working in companies on a day to day basis. But that costs a lot of money. You've got to have high level people. You've got to have a, a lot of high level professors. Do you those know, high level they've professors done a lot of come studies. Of they buildings? have to be paid, you know. I mean, I mean, do I have to? Do, do, yeah, I think people, the person who asked that question, you know. OK, All do right. you want the next question? Yeah, let's take the next question. Can you tell us more about the Bordeaux campus, where it's located, how are the rooms, etc.? It's a big etc. Yeah. Um, the Bordeaux campus is situated in Talence, which is where uh, the campus, the main campus is. It's about four miles from the centre. Mm -hmm. uh, let me insist on the fact that Bordeaux has just been voted by Lonely Planet as the most attractive city in the world. Not in France, not in Europe in the world, wow. ahead of Sydney, ahead of all the others. I, I mean, and, and everybody lives in the center of, uh, in the center of town. It, it Even is, the students who are going to the school. Yeah, but the people who come who haven't been there before, they, they say it, it is Europe's best kept secret. I mean, Bordeaux is a great place to study. Uh, and so, and the campus, uh, our building, which is a massive building, was only built three years ago. It's state of the art. There's a football pitch on the roof. There are gyms on the roof, etc. I mean, and this it, includes housing. They were asking about the rooms. So uh, housing is always a problem when you're in big cities. I mean, um, I'm not going to say that you just find uh, if you want to find something like that. So no well, campus housing. At all. Oh, there is campus housing, okay. of course, and we've got big service to help everybody to find to find accommodation. So some people are going to be in shares, in flat shares. Some people are going. I mean, they always find something. Some of them are out of town. I personally think the place to be is in town. I love it. It's a, there's a real buzz in the centre of Bordeaux. But don't forget that a lot of our students are in Paris and mm -hmm. Paris it, it is a fabulous place to be. I mean, it, it, it's just uh, I mean, is there housing in the Paris for the Paris students as well? Or? Well, housing in Paris is cheaper than housing in London, which is cheaper than housing in Tokyo and so on. But we're in one of the but major school housing. There's world no school cities. housing in no, Paris. No, we don't okay. have any school housing. We don't. But again, we help our students. And uh, no, I think everybody. It, it's not a problem. But as you can imagine, uh, Paris is going to be more expensive than Bordeaux. Sure. But but again, this depends on on, on wherever you're going to do. If you're at London Business School, it's going to cost you more. Let's go on to the next question. Would you think it could be a good idea to do this program for someone that wants to create a company that sells fast-moving consumer goods? There you go. Somebody's watching who knows what FCG is. Yeah, it's FMCG, fast-moving consumer goods. Um, is it a good idea for somebody who wants to create a company? I'm not too sure about that. There's I'm not, not really much sure. an entrepreneurial aspect. I, I like the idea. I mean, this person who's asked the question, I love entrepreneur, to be honest. and and. I think somebody asked me this question not so long ago. They said, do you train people to be buyers or purchasing managers? Uh, to think that a young guy, 24 years old, who comes out of our place, becomes a purchasing manager or director straight away would be a little bit pretentious. But I, th I don't think the, qu the answer is either one or the other. I think we train people to be business drivers, business drivers. They're thinking about the business, whether you go to Nestle or whatever, and you're thinking about who are our customers, what's our competition, what's our value creation, what's our differentiation, which where is our useful. margin, yes, where is our margin coming from? And, and so we're training people before anything else to be business drivers. It's a consequence that we're working in purchasing. It's a happy one because there, is a lot of, there are a lot of job opportunities in this new area. but. If when the people have been five, eight, ten years in purchasing, they get the idea to be entrepreneur, well, I, I would encourage it. I love it. Uh, one of my biggest personal regrets is not having created my own company. And there you go. I mean, it's a little bit late for me, but <laughs> I could think, late. what it's do I want late, to do Gordon. tomorrow? No, it's never too late to follow Thanks, your dream. Jacob. I All like right, it. let's take the next question. OK. Are there any courses on how to debate, how to convince? Well, no, there aren't, but there are, there are lots of courses on management. Management is about 
uh, upwards management. I love this. How are you going to, you can't go and tell your boss, hey, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. But upwards management, we train people how to convince, how to influence, how are you going to get ideas across to your boss or your boss's boss. Uh, I was giving a class this morning about a fantastic example of somebody who left our place. He's working for Boots, Walgreen Boots in the UK. And um, he, he, he did a great example of what is upwards management. He'd seen something which is an example of what Mars have put into place in innovation capture. He sent me a mail, could I have the slides? I gave him the slides. And he, he managed in a little committee meeting to say, uh, he, he asked for 10 minutes in the end of a committee meeting. His N plus five was in that meeting. And, and at the end of the meeting, he said, I'd like to show you something I saw in my school, which is a benchmark example of innovation capture and he in 10 minutes he showed what Mars had done how long it had taken and so on uh, in the week that followed his n plus five called me and said can we have a meeting and we're going to launch something with that company I I in January if that's a fantastic example so you're of, seeing broader of, reaching of, impact through tact, diplomacy how do you get strong messages across to people it's not that easy but, but if that's what the question is about, that to me is management and leadership. And we do a lot of that, yeah. Great, yeah. all right, next question. What kind of jobs could we expect to have at the end of the program? Mm. Well, uh, everybody, 100% of our students go into purchasing, okay? 100%? Yeah. yeah. Nobody leaves the program saying, I hate purchasing, I'm no. doing something else. No, not yet, <laughs> no, no. They don't, uh, they get several job, op job opportunities. It would take me quite a long time to answer that question because if you're purchasing commodities and raw materials, we've got somebody who's working purchasing cocoa, somebody work purchasing coffee, it's not the same job at all as purchasing packaging. Packaging is a fabulous area to be in, why? Because it's innovation, innovation, innovation. Everything we're using today, if you've got things like lipsticks and mascaras, it's made of plastic. In two years' time, it won't be plastic. It'll be biodegradable paper. It won't look like biodegradable paper, but it will be. And thank goodness for that. This, these are areas that are moving fast. And so those areas are exciting places to be. You could be in purchasing of non-production spend. You could be purchasing IT. You could be purchasing marketing. You could be purchasing advertising. You could be purchasing advertising commercials that go on television with advertising agencies. Purchasing now it is across the whole spectrum. Everything, yes. Yeah, and um, I'd say most, to answer the question, where do most of our students go? It's into production purchasing. All this, uh, especially in FMCG, all the packaging and that area, uh, marketing is the big, the big area today. That's All right, we're going to take another break because okay. it's time for the expert question. Uh huh. All right, so your question. At a time of digital, inter uh, digital transformation and collaborative economy, how do you best prepare your students to the structural transformation of the sector? Of what do, what do you mean by? Do you want me to reread the question? Yeah. Okay. At a time of digital transformation and the collaborative economy, how do you best prepare your students to the structural transformation of the sector? I don't think that, I think that question is a little bit, with all due respect, out of date because digital uh, is here now. What does that mean? Um, the, the effect that it's had on purchasing is enormous. Why? Because if you were buying even 15 years ago, why did people buy locally? Because they didn't know where suppliers were. How did you find out about suppliers in the old days? Well, you got on an aeroplane with suitcases, you went to a trade fair, and you went from stand to stand in Morocco or, or in, in Budapest or wherever, or in Hong Kong, trying to find out who the potential suppliers were. Everything today is on Google. So digital is, is, has been with us. You, you and this is and integrated I, into the program. Yeah, digital. This is part of it, you know. And is there and, a collaborative and, economy outlook? Well, if, of course it is, because that's that's basically what it is, you know. If you look at as you're taking this forward, it's it's about um, the impact of of what all the digital um, uh, scene has brought to purchasing has had a, m a massive impact. 
and it's had an impact on the way not only you go about buying, it's had a massive impact, as you know, about the way companies do their business online and so on and so on. And so all of that is integrated. What does it mean for many companies? The immediate impact is if you look at product life cycles today, they're much, much shorter than they used to be because the name of the game is, uh, is, tr is trying to attract attention all the time, all the time. So if you look at, at purchasing life cycles uh, of almost anything that's in FMCG, over the last five years, it's gone from sort of three years to two years to one year. You look at Gillette, they're bringing out new razors every nine months now. Mega marketing campaign, online, online, social network, uh, etc. Uh, one of the best are, if you look at Reckitt Benkies, at Reckitt Benkies, a British company, they take 16 or 18 of our students every year, lots of household goods, Erwick, Harpic and so on. But they are also the owners of Durex. They're the biggest condom manufacturer in the world. Will you look at the way they market today? Well, this is, they're all on games and everything. You press the button which says Durex. There's nothing that tells you to buy it, but it's hitting you all the time. And that has an impact on the way we sell, it has an impact on the way we buy and so on. So I think that's already here. It's going to move forward, that's for sure, but, but uh, no, I think that, and that is part of the course, of course it is. But where that question is possibly a bit more important is if the, the impact on marketing it has today. Social network marketing is, is it, you know, and, and less and less people watching television and so on. But point of sale information is big, big, big as well. Okay. And somebody has to buy it. Somebody has to buy it. If you go to L'Oreal, you look at their point of sale information today, you walk into the body shop and you, you're looking at something. When you go over there, there's an advert on about something you've just been looking at because it's detected that you were actually, you picked up the bottle and so on and so on. It's, it's fast moving. Somebody has to buy it. Let's move on to our, our viewers' questions. What do we have now? Go ahead and read the question. For I'm me. confused regarding your part on learning about new tools for purchasing and procurement. Isn't it simply the digital? Well, of course, it's not simply digital. Mm -hmm. If it was simply digital, I wouldn't have spoken so much about relationship building. Thank goodness it's not simply digital. We or you can't just forget humans. You could just sit at home and start buying stuff. Uh, yeah, you at home can buy stuff from Amazon online if you like, but that's not the way you go about purchasing. Purchasing today is more about building relationships. Purchasing tools exist, but by the way, don't come to our program to get a purchasing toolbox. You can get that. Go and do a two or three week course in some specialist area. You'll have the toolbox, okay? That will enable you to be a buyer. But do, do you really want to just be a buyer or do you want to be working upstream on new product development, innovation capture, and so on? This is, do you want to be managing the thing tomorrow? That, that's what it's about. It's not about being a buyer. Uh, if you want to be a buyer, you, you, I don't think you need to come to, to, to a program of our standard. And so it's about where are we going? How do we, how do we see what I call the big picture? Where are companies making their, their, doing their business? Where's the new geographic zones? Where's our palm tree? Where are we aiming for? And how do we put our resource into getting there? And then who are the strategic suppliers we need to be working with? And that is about bringing them in, listening to them. Don't forget in the past, companies didn't listen to their suppliers. They were very directive. It was, here's the spec, make it cheap, make it fast, and if you don't like it, shut up, I'll go somewhere else. It was the baseball bat, it was conflictual. Today, after years and years of seeing suppliers fight amongst themselves to become the preferred supplier of L'Oreal or Danone or Nestle or whatever, we are now in a situation where some companies want to be the preferred customer. Because if you've got a supplier just outside Amsterdam that's got an idea. How do I know he's going, to, he's going to knock on my door before giving it to Unilever or giving it to Nestle? And so this is all about working closely, building relationships, being, having the same palm tree so that our suppliers know what we're developing, what we've got in the pipeline. In the past, that didn't happen. In the past, companies were paranoid about not giving away information. Mm. But that is changing and it's all about integrating, it's about, it's about interdependency. It goes so back on. to the relationships like you said. It's all about relationships. So let's go uh, to don't, the next If question. you're in a digital environment, to me, that is more man and machine. Uh, uh, people who like machines, there are lots of jobs in that area. I want people who like people and understand the importance of it.
people who like people. Mm -hmm. Next question. Do we have time left, especially for internships? Do you help us get them? Yeah, of course we help you get them. Uh, the internship is at the end of the program. Um, we not only help you get them, but companies actually fight to, to get our students. Wow, so how do and you so help students get internships? Is there a website or a center? Well, what will happen uh, with our students in January, uh, starting at the beginning of January, I, th I think the first company to come in is a German company called Henkel. Mm -hmm. The second company is Rekebenkisa. Then Nestle are coming in. These Unilever, are the companies fighting for and students. And they come in. Uh, individually, it's not, a, uh, it's not a student fair, they come in, they make dedicated, personalised presentation to our students and then they usually have an after work which is a little, little bit more informal but they're there, they've got the, their radars out looking for the people they might like and the next morning from 8 o'clock on their interviews, interviews, interviews. Sounds like the Hunger Games. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> exciting but there's massive rivalry and I can tell you uh, between two of the companies I've just, uh, I've just mentioned, uh, one of them's not happy about coming in second. Why? Because the first company that comes in, they interview, they tell the people who they want, they give them 48 hours to reply. 48 hours. Why? Because they know another company's coming in next week. And this happens both in Paris and in Bordeaux? It happens more in Bordeaux than in Paris because the people in Paris that we have are on what's called an alternance. They're already working for companies. So they're spending three weeks per month in the company and then one week uh, with us and invariably those, custom, those companies will offer them jobs towards the end. Uh, the problem is if they are offered jobs and they're in France we're trying to encourage most of those students to go abroad. Why should they go abroad? Why go outside of Europe? Um, because the best opportunities are out there because as I said before we don't have many com much competition in this new product development purchasing innovation capture even across the world and so there are, there are fabulous opportunities out there and I think people go up the ladder faster when they're out there. We have time for one last question. You claim at the end of your brochure that all alumni work in the top level of their profession is that really the case? We've got to make this one quick. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, there, there's some unbelievable people. I think they're not just good at their profession. They're interesting human beings. That's what's important. Uh, life is about relationships and human beings. You know, teachers today, their job is not about telling you how to do this, that and the other. You can go online and find that. It's about simplifying, it demystifying, creating enthusiasm so you will go home and go online and find out about it. So it's about creating that buzz, creating the desire to go out and do it. I think the people we have are not only high level in their area, they're all, they're all people who like young people. And they're people, you know, there are lots of people who say, oh, young people, it's not what they used to be. I agree, they're much better than they used to be. They're more multicultural, they're more multilingual. And internet has totally transformed the way we acquire and we take on, on board knowledge. All right, yeah. Gordon, I'm really sorry. Our student didn't make it today. Thank you for coming and thank you for watching. We will see you here soon again on Campus Channel. Thanks, Jake.